If you're thinking about starting the transition towards electric motoring, well, a hybrid vehicle is a really good option to start with. First of all, a hybrid vehicle is, as it says, a car that combines multiple power sources within its drivetrain. And in the vast majority of cases, that means it has both a conventional combustion engine and an electric motor with a battery pack. But not all hybrids are created equal, as car makers use that combination in different ways, and in some cases, for different outcomes. So let's take a look to see what's out there, why they are different, and what the benefits of each configuration is. For starters, there are five basic configurations of hybrids, starting with mild hybrids that have what is called an integrated starter motor, and that allows the engine to shut down when the vehicle is stopped at traffic lights or while coasting at highway speeds. These generate an incremental reduction in fuel consumption, and in some cases can use the electric motor to assist that initial acceleration phase, but essentially use the combustion engine all the time. Next is a series hybrid, which is essentially an EV as the electric motor drives the wheels, but it does have a small capacity combustion engine that acts as an onboard generator, and that allows it to recharge the battery and provide additional driving range. A prominent example of this is the BMW i3X, which has a two cylinder engine from a scooter next to the electric motor. Then there's a parallel hybrid system like that introduced by the Honda Insight way back in 1999, when it became the first mass-produced hybrid vehicle. In that case, it can use either the electric or the petrol engine to drive the gearbox. Most modern hybrid vehicles, however, are what is called a series parallel hybrid, which means they can use an infinitely variable combination of petrol or electric power, and the battery can only be recharged when decelerating or braking. And finally, there are plug-in hybrids, which take a step closer to being a full EV as they can travel short distances on electric power alone and have a larger capacity battery that can be recharged at home, the office or via a growing network of public charging stations. And what we have here are two examples of the latter, the Hyundai Ioniq, which is available as a standard hybrid and here, a plug-in hybrid vehicle. At a glance, there's barely any difference between them. They have the same five door body, same five seat cabin and all the latest mod cons and active safety features. In fact, from the outside, all that you can see that defines them is different style alloy wheels and those badges. Under the bonnet, they both have exactly the same engine, a lean burning 1.6 litre four cylinder that produces 77 kilowatts of power and 147 newton metres of torque and drives the front wheels through a six speed dual clutch automatic gearbox. Sandwiched between the engine and the gearbox, the Ionic Hybrid has a 32 kilowatt 170 newton metre electric motor that increases its total combined outputs to 104 kilowatts and 265 newton meters. And under the boot at the back of the car here, it has a 240 volt lithium ion polymer battery that stores 1.56 kilowatt hours of energy. The plug-in hybrid vehicle may have the same peak torque and power outputs, but it is fitted with a more powerful electric motor, producing 44.5 kilowatts, and it has a significantly larger battery, producing 360 volts and storing 8.9 kilowatt hours. And that means they do perform differently when and how you drive them. The hybrid we're in first is pretty simple. Just get in and go, and the computer does all the work for you allowing the electric motor to essentially only assist you under initial acceleration while the battery recharges under braking or deceleration. Basically, you don't have to think about anything and the end result is pretty impressive fuel consumption figures of 3.4 litres per 100 k's. But the plug-in hybrid is even better with a claimed average of just 1.1 litres per 100 k's. It achieves that because you can choose to drive the plug-in hybrid as a fully electric vehicle, giving you about 63 kilometres of driving range without using a drop of petrol. And considering the average daily commute for Australians is about 40 kilometres, you might never see a petrol station for weeks, even months. However, to do that, you will need to plug it in each day to keep the battery topped up, either via an optional high voltage wall box that can be fitted at your home or office or by using the growing network of public charges like this one. As for the costs, well, plug-in hybrid technology does come with a bit of a premium. The Hyundai Ioniq FEV here, for example, is around $7,500 more expensive than the standard hybrid. But that can be recovered if you use it in EV mode most of the time and have sustainable power like solar energy in around 30,000 kilometers of driving. 
both Ionic models here, as well as the fully electric variant, are covered by Hyundai's five year warranty while the battery is guaranteed for eight years. Whichever route you take, a hybrid vehicle is a more efficient option than a conventional petrol car and is therefore going to save you significant money in overall running costs. There's more hybrids available now than ever before and there's plenty more to come. So if you're looking at transitioning your fleet to electric power in the future and want to know more about hybrid options today, speak to Lease Plan for more information.